Thank you very much, Excellency. Handing over the stage for the welcoming words of Her Excellency, the Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Dr. Angela Merkel. Yeah, ich werde Deutsch sprechen, deshalb well, I will speak in German, so you should actually use the technical devices uh, that are provided for your service, Secretary General, and dear Antonio, ministers, excellencies, members of parliament from parliaments all over the world, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you here to Berlin. I, and I speak on behalf of the whole federal government, am delighted to be able to welcome you here. Uh, and we are equally delighted uh, to uh, have you come here and bring your ideas uh, for the future of the Internet along with you. We are truly grateful for this. And as the Secretary General of the United Nations has just told you, he was an electrical engineer, I was a physicist, uh, and indeed we lost our way some way along the road. Well, but for the technical um, developments of our time, it may well be a boon to have a few politicians uh, in leadership who know a little bit, at least in my case, it's rudimentary uh, knowledge of these technical uh, uh, things. I know Gantonio will probably be much more knowledgeable still in this. So we understand the world as it is. The Internet Governance Forum of the United Nations takes place for the 14th time um, already, but for the first time in Germany, and particularly as a host uh, to this forum, but also beyond um, this week and the meetings of this week, we would like to give a contribution towards um, exchanging globally how we wish to revitalize the values and the rules um, on of the internet, because it's becoming ever more important um, to discuss um, together how we want to use and shape this Internet of the Future. And together means um, representatives of the world of politics, of the civil society, of the business communities, of science. And it also means all of the countries together. That is the basic principle underlying uh, multilateralism, underlying the United Nations. And this is uh, what uh, should be the basis for any further development of these new te technologies. And this is uh, what the, uh, why the IGF is so valuable, because that is a forum where all of the stakeholders uh, of internet governance uh, from all over the world come together to exchange experiences, ideas. Um, basically, this is where the analog and the digital world merge. One world, one net, one vision. Um, this year's motto um, tells us in a nutshell what this is all about, namely to promote a common understanding about the future of the Internet, what sort of values, what sort of principles, what sort of rules uh, do we wish to transfer from our analog world into the digital world, and uh, what should be the principles that govern us and guide us. The most important value behind the Internet, after all, is freedom. And we all know that freedom is nothing that can be taken for granted, never. It needs to be fought for, it needs to be defended time and time again, and every time we have to clarify something together, namely how and where should freedom be protected. And what does freedom mean in very concrete terms? And also, where are the limits of freedom? What is allowed? What is not allowed? And this always comes into play when basic rights of um, others are infringed upon or have to be preserved. For example, the rights of children, or when the rights of others are in any ways, as I said, infringed upon or violated. We Germans, um, this month in particular, and we've seen that um, in the film that we've seen, have talked a lot about what freedom means for our country. 30 years ago, in November 1989, the Berlin Wall fell. The strong yearning for peace and freedom of the people in the GDR and among our neighbors in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, and in the Baltic states uh, was something that could no longer be suppressed by coercive state measures. And what the division of Germany and Europe meant for the people 
is something that you can very clearly see for yourself here in Berlin in particular, a former border crossing point between what was then East and West Berlin is only a few steps, only a few hundred meters away from here. Actually, you can see some parts of what was formerly the wall at the entrance of this uh, venue weighing tons, um, but freedom weighed and still weighs more. And I can tell you that only a few hundred meters away from here, but in the eastern part of Berlin at the time, um, was working as a scientist. Um, I've never seen this uh, part of um, town uh, from over there, but um, over there was my uh, place of work. The wall and the Iron Curtain were finally torn down 30 years ago. This longing of the people for peace and self-determination had finally prevailed and our country and our continent could grow together again. So freedom of travel, of press, of opinion, profession, um, and also the right to deter freely determine your own personality. All these basic rights could finally be brought to bay all over Europe. And freedom the hope for progress for all. That was, after all, the vision of the inventors of the Internet 50 years ago and of the World Wide Web 30 years ago. And some of them are actually among us here today. The Internet, right from the start, technically speaking, was developed in such a way that it was able to transcend territorial borders, that it was possible to use it all over the world and that it would link up people all over the world. Um, Today, there are about 4 billion uh, Internet users, and Antonio Guterres pointed to the, fact, to the way that, in fact, that actually this has developed much, much faster than, for example, at the time, the um, um, well popularity of uh, the printing press and, and uh, printed books. By 2030, um, we think that it will probably be 7 billion people who have access to the Internet, and we all benefit from this global bonding, from this global connectivity. Because in this way, people are brought together from uh, totally different countries, totally different civilizations, uh, beyond perceived barriers, barriers that are established um, through politics, through religion, or through social status. And in truth, the Internet has had an impact on our day-to-day -day life. Um, and less and less people can actually envisage uh, communication or work or shopping um, through simply and exclusively um, analogous means. But in the same way that we quite naturally use around the clock the Internet, um, it is just as natural for us uh, to see the Internet as a global, truly global network uh, where geographical distances are largely irrelevant. Um, flows of data and information link up cities, link up um, countries and continents, and technically speaking, um, geographical distances, um, however, that need to be crossed through a worldwide net of underwater cables, for example, still play a role because a large part of um, data flows, for example, and data links between North and South America um, actually take place through the landing station in Fortaleza in Brazil. Um, data communication between Europe and Asia um, is flowing through underwater cables in the Suez Canal. And Singapore is a landing station for a whole cluster of cables uh, that link up the Asian and the Pacific area. And another example, and another case in point, are the internet exchange points, where internet providers uh, link up to uh, the global network and therefore open up access to the internet. Three of the largest internet exchange points are in Europe, in Frankfurt, Amsterdam, and London. And they will still link us, even at the time when the United Kingdom will have finally left the European Union. This common internet infrastructure has become the very core of our global um, economy. It is of central importance for sustainable development and innovation all over the world. Billions of people in this way can exchange news. They can uh, present their views um, on the internet. They can exchange um, information, experiences. It is a place for democratic discourse and for the shaping of political opinions to the better and for the worse. That is also something that the Secretary General has said. Um, there are some who um, remain in their little bubble, uh, do not actually exchange views with people who are of a different opinion. And that is one of the challenges that we face um, in this overall development of the Internet. But there are other reasons, too, why some um, in this world 
find that such an open internet, um, a free internet, and the decentralized structure of the internet is an irritant um, in the eyes of some non-democratic states and their leadership interfere in the freedoms that the internet creates. They are trying to push through their own or national interests. And to this end, they are trying to shut off their national um, networks from the global internet. And some private companies too invest in their own isolated infrastructure, which then entails the danger that global companies build up parallel universes with their own standards, their own rules, that then they impose through international bodies on others. That's a very, very tricky issue. And I understand this forum and the purpose of this forum in that you wish to stand up against such a development. Because what we have to clarify is, what do we mean when we talk about digital sovereignty and retaining that on the one hand, and on the other hand, not shutting ourselves off against others, but act multilaterally. Of course, digital sovereignty is of prime importance, but it may well be that on this planet, we understand different things when we use the same term. As I see it, digital sovereignty does not mean protectionism. It does not mean that a state body um, says this or that information uh, may pass through. Uh, that would be censorship. What it means is that we as an individual are capable, and also as a society, we are capable of determining ourselves digital development and digital sovereignty. So also in a digital society, technical innovations have to serve the person, the individual, and not the other way around. We, as those who here in Germany have become successful through a system we call social market economy, are very well aware of the, the technological advances and companies that develop them um, cannot always just be given a free reign. You have to have guardrails in place. That was um, true during the Industrial Revolution, and it will have to take place in the age of the internet. So we need sovereignty over what actually happens on the ground. And this is why it is indeed an expression of sovereignty if we stand up for a free, open, and safe global internet when we are convinced that isolation is not an expression of sovereignty, but that we, all of us together, share a treasure of values. For what would be the consequences if we were to pursue a policy of shutting ourselves off or isolationism? We would have a fractured, an increasingly fractured internet, but the consequence of that would be, and we see this in the course of history, um, it would not lead to a good uh, development because this global infrastructure might well become an unstable, prone to breakdowns due to attacks, to surveillance, uh, filters and censorship uh, of information by uh, state authorities, um, and there might well be um, an arbitrary shutdown of internet or mobile phones in order to uh, prevent the people from communicating with each other. So an attack against internet connectivity, which after all is the basic pillar of a free and open internet, has become a dangerous instrument of politics. And many of you here know this from your own experience. Such attack, such attacks might well deprive people of their basic right to information and communication. And in this way, the idea of the founding fathers of the internet, their vision will be turned upside down. And this is why we all need to preserve the core of the internet as a global public good. And this will only be possible if we rethink the structures of this um, in governance um, of, the, of the internet, of this global network, this global network that after all links us all. But how can we work against these uh, efforts by some states to um, cut themselves off from the free internet or to be the only ones who actually shape the future of this net. Well, um, I think that we have to look at the fact that a network is only as strong as the number of the, of the people who use it. Um, so what this needs is the effort of many um, that need to step in in order to um, preserve this 
cross-border decentralized internet. And that is to say, we have to understand that we need to act multilaterally. And this will be the only way how we can actually come to a common understanding what we mean when we talk of an open internet. So I very much welcome the Secretary General's um, idea to nominate an envoy uh, for upholding this uh, free global internet um, who enjoys his personal trust. And this is why also w during the German G20 presidency in 2017, we established a so-called digital strand within the G20. Obviously, we know that the G20 don't stand for um, all um, the whole world, but I think much would already have been achieved if in this very important group we could all already come to an understanding. And this is why I'm so pleased to see that we have been able to garner important commitments by the G20 member states, um, for example, on global link up uh, to the internet and on global standards. Why were we able to do this? Well, first and foremost, because the civil society and also the business community was taken along. Um, we and the states on our own will not be able to do this. And this is why it's so important for us that in the G20 process, we always try to bind in um, civil society and also the representatives of our business community and, as Antonio Guterres quite rightly pointed out, the women too. Women who um, also are um, in danger of being cut off by these new technological adv advances um, that the internet means. And that means that the internet must not and cannot be shaped only by uh, states and governments alone because the basic issues revolving around the internet uh, do have an impact on each and everyone's lives. Life. And this is why we need a comprehensive dialogue, we need a multi-stakeholder approach um, that the IGF pursues. And this is why I'm so truly grateful to you for coming together here in order to present your common view of the matter at hand. And obviously, that is a new approach because the traditional multilateral structures on this world only know cooperation among governments. But I think this will no longer serve um, the purpose um, these days. So we have to try and time again, uh, try and persuade people that we need to um, have a broad-based approach. And if we want to use um, the internet globally, then we also have to think globally because the internet has an effect on each and everyone, also on those um, who do not as yet have an access. And this is why we have to strengthen internet access uh, and also um, the uh, participation and, and um, equal participation in digitalization. You will talk about inclusion, I understand, over the next few days to come. And I was quite gratified to, uh, to see that during a, a closed meeting of our cabinet, we were able to learn from Africa. They want to actually um, establish an African market. They want to have not only free trade um, and, and a free market and a single market in the proper sense of the word, but they also want to build up um, the internet and also want to build up um, common and equal access to the internet in Africa. The Antonio Guterres, together with uh, experts from the civil society, uh, from politics, from the business community and science, you um, drafted a report on digital cooperation. And uh, these proposals for embarking on new pathways to globally shape the internet is now gaining momentum. And when we talk about internet governments, we have to first and foremost develop an understanding on values. We have to um, try and come to an understanding of how we can preserve human rights, democracy, and rule of law in the digital age, how we can strengthen um, equal participation and safety, and also trust um, in the net. And we have to uh, chart new courses because we are actually used to um, everything that we've uh, agreed on um, internationally and nationally uh, to put into law. But what we need more now is more. We need the participation of our business community, of our citizens, and by drafting bills alone, um, this will not simply not be sufficient. It's a great challenge because digital transformation is placing very basic questions um, in front of our society. It's certainly not so that everything that is feasible and technically possible um, online is actually ethically desirable. That, incidentally, is not a new phenomenon. We've known that in the non-digital world, um, but particularly with a view to artificial intelligence. We re will need to debate these issues um, even more um, in depth. We, not, we 
do not therefore have to talk only about what we want, but also about what we do not want and what we do not want, um, if you allow me. This question will, in many in, 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 in certain areas of the community, um, not find such keen um, participants in a discussion than in others. Um, but that, again, comes back to the question that technology has to serve uh, the people, has to serve the individual. And this will only be possible if we act together. International formats and the social society, uh, the civil society, governments have to be included in um, the same way in all of these discussions and discourses. And if one is honest, if I only look at my own country, we do not as yet have a national consensus of this. We have seen this um, in the European community, for, in the European Union, for example, when we talked about copyright issues, when we talked about the general data protection protection regulation, there are still a lot of controversial issues out there that need to be debated, and this is why we must be um, willing to um, organize new uh, possibilities of participation where every voice is heard and is of equal value, and that means we need to be capable of having discourse, a true cooperation, and this is why isolating ourselves in little bubbles of people who think the same way. Um, is certainly not something that will bring us forward or enable us to solve these problems. So um, it is in this spir spirit that the Internet Governance Forum here in Berlin breaks new ground. And I think it's a very important message um, that upon the initiative of Federal uh, Minister of Economics, Peter Altmaier, also members of parliament from all over the world have come here to Berlin, because I think that this indeed is also something that serves our democracy. Um, over and above this for us as um, German federal government, digital transformation also has to be thought of in European terms. For, European, for Europe can, with all of its ideas, with all of its values, all of its interests, give an important contribution to a common global vision for the future of the internet. Generally around one can say this reordering of the internet governance um, is a truly global effort and it means that countries and groups of interest need to close ranks and Germany is willing to shape this reorientation of global internet policy under the auspices of the United Nations. We are convinced that the United Nations and IGF are key to creating a global consensus on a free, open and decentralized internet. And ladies and gentlemen, I wish you every success for this Internet Governance Forum here in Berlin. May you be inspired by this location where 30 years ago when the war fell, that marked the dawn of a new age. We too, in what was then the German Democratic Republic, would never have dreamt of seeing this war fall within our lifetime. But it happened because people were courageous. Many individual people showed courage. And obviously, all of that took place in a favorable um, environment. But well, uh, the courage of each and every individual and when it is shared with other individuals, may well open up roads that seem to be um, closed um, at this point in time. So I wish you interesting meetings um, with real people f for a change that maybe sometimes you only meet uh, through the internet. And when you go out and uh, to a pub or to a Berlin restaurant and have a beer together, that too doesn't need to be only digital, but uh, uh, also real. Enjoy Berlin. Thank you all. Sorry, sorry. One. <laughs> we, we.